This is the 3D Hummingbird project designed by Greg Zumwalt, and I printed the remix by GeoDave. When you go to print this project, you need to decide whose parts you're going to use. GeoDave's parts are not necessarily interchangeable with the original parts. He made some modifications to make it a little easier to print, and also gave you files that you can modify. I went ahead and modified it. I added lights to the inside, so the flower illuminates and the base illuminates. I added the lights so you can enjoy it when the motor's not on. I recently added a capacitive switch in the front so you could dim the lights so they're at a lower light and not disrupting the room. For a motor, I used a 20 millimeter motor and I did readjust the base so that the, the motor would fit inside. Since then, I've discovered that Greg has made a motor adapter for a 25 millimeter motor, and he also put the code out there so you can modify that for any size motor that you want to put in. So one problem with a 20 millimeter 12 volt motor is that it came with a four millimeter shaft, which is bigger than the original three, and the gear is really small. So using the adapter would leave a lot more room for the center pin around the gear so it's less likely to strip out or break. I added a power center to the back of this, and this allows you to turn on the bird and also use variable speed. This motor is 50 RPM, and I can see now that I could order the 100 RPM because I had very good motor control here in terms of speed, and it would allow me to go a little faster should I decided that it was suitable for the bird. Rather than put spacing feet on the bottom to prevent the tail from hitting the floor, I went ahead and added the height to the base. That also gave me a little bit more room for the control center. If I was to print the base again, I would put a panel on the other side opposite the power center, and I would make that for the capacitive switch. Putting the capacitive switch in the front required me to run wires. The components are really sensitive, and the actual wires are capacitive as well. By actually making it so you can click the, the circuit board into a panel back here would make it direct access to the board and eliminate those problems. And you can hold it and uh, control the dim function or you can tap it and turn it on and off. So when I first assembled my bird, it was uh, kind of a game of whack-a-mole. What would happen is it would stop spinning and what was happening is different bolts were tightening down. So when you're adjusting your bird, you wanna see that all of the places where you have bolts on both sides, that they turn freely without binding. The free spinning is being accomplished by the fact that the bolt is turning all the way down on the nut and that the clear round space should be sufficient not to pinch the component that it's holding. Now in the case of GeoDave, I was able to go in and reprint my bolts with 0.3 extra millimeters, which solved my problem and made all of my connections loose. Now the other modification I made was where the wing attaches to the body up here on the top using this connector. And what I didn't realize is that this connector is actually supposed to be riding on top of this ball. Now, if you look in the assembly pictures, it is correctly portrayed as being mounted on the ball. And Greg tries to explain it in his instructions. Now, you'll see that uh, one of the modifications I made is I made it thicker so it rode better on the ball. And in fact, if you go back to Greg's website, you'll see on the bottom that he added a thicker component. In an end state, you want it to be able to flo float freely. Now, I did modify it so that the bolt is countersunk. And in doing that, I made the fixture a little bit thicker. And that caused my rod to be of the wrong length. And I had to readjust the rod to get it so it floated properly. And I printed it incorrectly a couple dozen times. If you're having binding problems, I find the easiest way to start diagnosing it is to disconnect this nut right here. Now, the reason I do this one is because it separates the top of the bird and the base at the bottom so you can run the gears on both sides to see where you're binding. Now, the wings, uh, they were a little tricky as well. I had binding problems on the bottom, and I actually changed that out for a push pin. And it, uh, my intent was to glue it in, but I actually screwed it in. I printed it out of PET G, so it was a little bit more flexible. And that allowed me to just push that in, and I no longer have binding problems here. Now, I did go back and re-lubricate the insides of these gears. I took it all apart. As you're putting it together, you may want to put a dab of lubricant in there. And then I went through and I put some lubricant on all the gears when I was done, and they're lightly coated. Now, to do the illumination, I have the power plug that comes in, and the power goes to the lights, and they were originally were always on before I put the switch in. And then the power also goes to the motor control, which is over here. Now, I forgot to cover the red light on the, on the motor, and you can see that here. And you heard I just had some binding, and it skipped. To illuminate the flower, I cast two wire channels into the stem. You'll need to print the stem with the wire channels. Currently, I have a 26 gauge wire in there. It was some salvage wire. I think it was the reset button on an old PC or something. So you need to make sure the wires will run through the stem. After you make sure you have the right size, you want to go ahead and solder your LED on. 
Now there's no bracket holding the LED in the flower, so what I did to even it out is I soldered the positive on one side of the strip and I soldered the negative on the other side. I'm using a four millimeter strip in this case because uh, they're very short segments and I happen to have some around. You can use anything, uh, you just have to be careful that it doesn't hit the beak or interfere with operations. The flower is actually not glued on. I, rec I recommend you not glue your flower if you're going to until your unit is all assembled. The flower might need alignment to center with the beak and if you pre glued it onto the stem, you won't be able to adjust it to get it aligned. Uh, if it's nice and snug like mine, then you won't have to glue it at all. To do the wired stem, you will need my base or to make a base that can accommodate the wires exiting the stem hole and going underneath the unit. Now I did taper the bottom of the stem so that the wires hopefully don't get pinched. Now to suspend the light in the base, I actually put a bar underneath. Uh, I'd offset it and found that uh, when I mounted the lights directly on it, it uh, the lights were uneven. So I put a, a square pl a rectangular plate on it to recenter the lights. Uh, that also made it more cramped when I put the switch in later, but everything worked out fine. The electrical tape is really just to keep things from shorting out should a wire break loose or an LED light. I did mount my LED light in the base on a small piece of metal, and I really did that uh, because I was concerned that the heat from the LED would eventually warp the PLA bar that I'd made. It was really thin. So if you can take on this project, I recommend you go over to Greg's website and you need to download his images.zip file. That is detailed photos of every assembly step that you can zoom in on and see all the components. The other one that you absolutely need is the Hummingbird Parts zip file. And that is a list of all the quantity of each part that you need of the 39 parts to build the bird. If you are confused by all the parts, I recommend that you take the parts and put them in individual bags and label them. So as you do the assembly, you go to the bag and take out the part you need. Geo Dave, thank you for all the work on the remix. Incredible amount of work on that. I can't imagine, Greg, how much time you spend on doing these designs. If you've not seen Greg's design library, you need to go look at this. He does amazing work. So that's my hummingbird project. Uh, my goal was to make it uh, attractive and knowing that it wouldn't run all the time, uh, have some dual use and accent to it by adding the light to the flower in the base. It's going to make a great night light for the main room. And when we want to use it, it's got the switch so we can turn the motor on. I hope you enjoyed this video.